So hello, we're on uh, One Chi TV. Couldn't stop myself, it has to be, because that's what it is like now. We're on video, we're here to share with you these amazing teachers of Qigong that are in the UK at the moment, and I have with you the inimitable Mr. John Parkin. Welcome in. How are you today? I'm good, thank you, Clara. How are you? Yeah, really good. I'm very grateful for my Qigong practice at these times. Um, so I'm here to ask you sort of ostensibly five straight questions. So let's see how we go with that. <laughs> um, Are you worried? Are you worried that we're not going to get very far with the five questions with John C. Parker? <laughs> yeah, I think we, we could easily go off on some <laughs> tangents and some rabbit holes of deep interest, but we'll save that for another time. Right now, I'm interested to know how you found Qigong or how Qigong found you. Suppose it found me uh, in that um, back in, I think, about 1990, I was stressed and trying to find uh, some way to relax. And I, was, I got some tapes, some relaxation tapes, and was listening to those, uh, lying on a bed uh, in a lovely part of the UK called Slough. <clears throat> Not just in a bed on the street, but actually in a house. Uh, in, in the home I was living in. So in Slough, lying on a bed and relaxing. And uh, it's the first time part of the, the, the effect of the relaxation, as well as to feel nicely relaxed, whatever that means, part of the thing I noticed was the kind of tingling <clears throat> feeling in my body and um, the kind of buzzy, tingly feeling. I, I would have had trouble describing it, but I just, I liked the feeling. I kind of went, this is an interesting feeling. Of course, it's hard to remember exactly what I thought then, but I just like the feeling. And, and to the point, after a couple of weeks of practicing this relaxation tapes, I thought instead of it was a progressive relaxation, um, tensing and relaxing. Ten In the end, I just thought, OK, get that feeling all over the body. So instead of going around, I just go, OK, uh, OK, the hands are going, mm, the arms are going, mm, my shoulders are going, just the kind of buzzy feeling. And uh, so that was without knowing what it was, that was my first introduction to chi. That was my first experience of chi. And then about a couple of weeks after that, I was taken by my girlfriend's mother to a Tai Chi class in Windsor, where the teacher was talking about clearly Tai Chi. She did Qigong at the end and she talked about chi. And I went, I know that, I know that feeling. And so it's suddenly, suddenly that was it. That was the moment where I'd experienced something. It, it popped up in my life with a name and a history and our whole philosophy. And uh, the, world, the world opened up for me really. And I haven't, and yeah, it's the 30 years ago. And, and, and my, ex, my exploration of, of Chi has been since then. That's kind of what I do. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. I can still feel your excitement here as well. It, it's like, what is this? And then yeah. someone else mentions it. You're going, oh, so you know about it as well. And then, yeah, yeah. And, and that being able to put words to it, it's not easy. But I think the more of us that describe it from our angles, it helps to create a big, bigger picture for it, for other yeah. people who may be new to this or, yeah. you know, interested in exploring. So what is it that you love about Qigong then, John? That might get harder to answer um, as I get older and as I experience it more. I would have said um, for many years that I, I love Qigong because it, it's the connection I have uh, when I go from the, uh, when I go from the material to the non-material, when I contact the, I don't know what it would be, the energy or the universe or, or spirit or whatever. Um, when it's the time I would calm down every day and get in touch with myself. I have described for many years Qigong as, um, as being like, um, <clears throat> like an inner mirror, like an energetic mirror, in that just like we'd look in, into a, a real mirror and see a reflection of ourselves. It's impossible to, uh, to practice Qigong without getting an energetic or state reflection of ourselves. Just like the mirror will generally reflect this. When I do Qigong, what's reflected is, is <gasps> or, ah, or, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, all the different things. You can't avoid it. You st I generally stand, you stand there, 
and you go, okay, this is how I am. So yeah, uh, and so, so uh, what is it to me now? Uh, no, no freaking idea, Clara. It's everything, <laughs> everything and nothing. Baby. Qigong is everything, really. It's like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't restrict my definition of Qigong to a practice. It's just it doesn't make any sense. Qigong means working with qi. When when we're alive, we're working with qi. So mm. I'm doing Qigong now. We're doing Qigong now. We're doing Qigong now, whether they know it or not. So at that point, you know, I don't want to be. Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's good. That idea of it being an inner mirror. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you meet yourself in your wuchi. You're like, yeah. oh, ah, okay. So it's yeah. one has to be like courageous to go into that space and go, I don't know what I'm going to meet, but I know that I have, I have tools and techniques to help me clear stagnation and to come into flow, and also deep compassion for the human condition as well. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to be kind to myself here, best that I can, and witness the witness there is a really important key point I feel for us all our Qigong players that we uh, don't get so involved in the drama anyway going off on one see I knew that was going to happen no, that's Back fine. In. And I also want to say while we're on video because I I'm if I'm looking at them I'm looking at the camera but when you're speaking I'm looking at my screen which is you so I'm looking down so I just wanted to, to say that for the viewers like I'm, okay. I'm my eyes my eye my eyeline is going between two places that's it feels fun. it feels rude to listen to you and not look at you oh bless you yeah <laughs> Whereas I've trained myself. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. But it's all good. I, I love this um, exchange. Actually, everything is, is Qigong. And that's what we get to, isn't it? It's not just rocking up for practice. But anyway. It's both back... and I'll, say, I'll say this. It's both easier and difficult. That It's both easier because then there's no need to practice. And there's no need to think that anything is not it. Uh, we don't. Everything is it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it became, in, that, in that sense, it's easier in the mm, oh wow great well this is it then this is this is chikung yeah this is chikung so let's have a conversation yeah just well just get drunk together yeah that's chikung oh well i just forget about chikung and that's chikung yeah that's chikung uh, but that's also very very difficult to get because then you go well i won't practice then yeah all right that's still mm -hmm. chikung but what you know what I mean? so you it gets very this but it's i think it's how it is it's it's the chi is is everything so how can we not be it how can we not be doing it quite but as you say you are 30 years on so you weren't yeah. like this initially this your practice has got you to this place of presencing in every moment the best you can i don't um <clears throat> i don't i wouldn't say i'm present every moment and i'm certainly not consciously present every moment um uh, and i don't know whether it takes 30 years either i think uh if, if, if those who are listening are, are new to qigong there's a kind of i mean my main teaching which is qigong over the last 15 years has been through <clears throat> i'm not using the word but effort uh and an effort is is qigong in action really because what it says is is all that stuff that you're stressing over it doesn't matter so much it's like it's all it just sit back you're you're fine you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to do anything just like woof and that is oh that's chi but also the is chi it's a different apparently different type of chi but it's still chi running through it yeah, yeah exactly fascinating i'm also yeah. clara and I, i'm also clara and listeners viewers i am naturally contrary <laughs> so almost whatever is proposed to me <laughs> i will at some level disagree with part of my head well, it's so if you give me two opposite views i will give the opposite view and we somehow we end up, <laughs> end up back in the same place <laughs> i'll just bring the yin yang in because that's what's here there's it's a constant dance isn't it and that's what makes conversations with you so interesting and fun so the next question <clears throat> is do you adhere to a strict lineage form a strict lineage form you said that so quickly i i i was getting a variety of things from it i got um banana porridge because that's what's that's what i've had a recent experience of 
Uh, I got a variety of things. A strict lineage form. No, I really bloody well don't. And why would I? <laughs> I'm of the wayward school. You know our friend of the, of the wayward school, um, uh, Barefoot Doctor, who uh, inspired me and encouraged me in my early years of practice to take the wayward path, which I think is a, it's not just a wayward or contrary, I said contrary path for the sake of it. It's bang on Taoism, which is to kind of, Taoism and Qigong really is about uh, listening in, and following what's there. And so, yes, I've, I've followed various teachers and I've done various practices. Um, Master Lam, for example, and the kind of uh, Zham Zhong Qigong tradition of standing Qigong, I really like that. And I've done that for a long time, but um, anybody that's done my Qigong over the years, they, I just make it really easy and really simple and uh, are not too precise around positions and everything else and let people feel it in their bodies. And they often then if I try to find, you know, find a teacher locally or something. And they say, oh, it's quite strict, isn't it? <laughs> you, can, you have to have you in a certain, it's like, yeah, it, it can be, and it can be this and it can be that. Uh, but in, in, in my sense of it, it's, it's lovely for it to be, and bang on actually the philosophical roots of it to be, to be about tuning in and listening and then seeing what's there. And then, you know, in a kind of spontaneous chicken, just see what movement is there, see what postures are there and see what needs to happen from there. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful, mm. thank you. So what do you feel you have gained mostly from your Qigong practice? Um, as, a, as a practice over the years, I would, uh, connect with myself with the non material side of life I would it's a, a, just very practically it's been a very good way to relax for me uh, I'm thinking of the early years um, when I was not very well and I was uh, quite stressed and it was making me even uh, even more sick so I'd <laughs> when, I was, when I was a student actually in the early 90s I would go to the the um the the lose kind of and it's a kind of college with kind of cubicles and i go into a cubicle and lock the door and just stand there for five minutes and i mean potentially the one of the worst places you can do it's not near the ocean it's not in the hills i would imagine that but it's not it's in a loo in pretty dirty loo but just standing there in posture just really calming down and feel the feeling the chi so uh, it's given me a huge amount of of calming and a kind of journey for myself. Um, and then this, I mean, it's the it's the doorway between the at a, between the left and the right brain. It's the it's the movement from the busy to the quiet part of my head, and also the kind of uh, the the chikung state, the the um, the the um, alpha instead of beta the alpha state in the brain where it's like ah hmm and that state is you know doesn't matter so much which is real effort for me it doesn't matter so much it's like very hmm okay then hmm so the kind of logical thought process just calms down it's like what was your question <laughs> <laughs> that was great yeah um... <laughs> I could feel it with you in the chi field here. Yeah. So um, last one of this set of questions anyway, <laughs> is if you have two minutes, which you do, uh, have you got something that you'd like to share with us around a Qigong form or a Qigong meditation, just to round off this uh, one chi interview? So um, early, from early on, uh, chi became my indicator as to to whether I was calm or not. So I'd I'd simply tune in to my body, and if I could sense the chi, then I'm I'm okay. I'm doing all right. If I couldn't really sense the chi, or it's not there, I'd just then sit into it and breathe more deeply, and then start to sense it. Usually in the hands first, 
until I could start to feel the chi flowing through the different parts of my body. And that's something you can do at any time, day or night. And I do do it at night as well. Just tuning in and feeling the chi. And that's so simple and so easy. We can all do it. And that is qigong. And uh, it means that within about five seconds, you can calm down and you can get the chi moving more uh, just by tuning in. So that's that end of it. And that can then lead to what I, I regard as my deepest practice over the years which is um which i very very rarely share but i just a deep practice of following the chi in my body so it's a combination of kind of dreaming um it's half asleep a dreaming and then a and visualizing and just in, incredible connecting of chi and exploding and and weird things happening so a, a real kind of um a kind of internal naigung type of 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 experience if i don't want any words for it it's just kind of something i've done something i've just developed from being half literally being asleep and it's very easy to do when you're about to have a nap and if it's so that's the last bit of my very extended two minutes uh, as well as just tuning in um, one of my great one of my best tips really is to to do qigong any practice that you do have whilst having it whilst going into a nap so normal, you know, just any old, whenever you have a nap, just do Qigong as you're going into the nap and bang, magic really starts to happen. The nap then becomes a kind of weird Qigong session. <laughs> no, I am so with you. When, when I um, was able to um, bring the, the external movements into an, an internal flow, that's yeah. when my, my practice shifted hugely. So, yeah, and that you're right, that place between sleeping and waking is such a magical zone that, you know, just a little bit of breath or a little bit of scooping the loop, as dear Beth at Stephen would say, um, uh, or some way of like listening. I could really feel as you were describing that, how you have such respect for your internal energy system. There's, there's, yeah. there's a wisdom that you're tuning in with and responding to or watching or, you know, that whole just being in, Captivated. captivated yeah i it's interesting i mean i've been with i've been with teachers over the years um in fact stephen uh barefoot doctor put, put me onto his uh, one of his early uh, kind of a peer and a teacher um called bob coleman in in he was then in london he's not there now and i uh, i was always just like a kid with chi which is like mm. show me the you know teach me tai chi show me the next moves like oh my goodness oh wow that's amazing and it's like for him it was like just a kind of he never really talked about chi it was just an ordinary it was just life it was just an ordinary thing it was and i kind of i kind of get that uh it is a little bit more like, I, I have both i think now i have a kind of i still have an excitement around it um but also i have that kind of well it is just life it's like you know if if you're alive and you tune in <laughs> <laughs> there's chi and it's like but at some level that and that um that combination quality is kind of how life is really which is how this should be it should always be microcosmic and, and metaphorical as well as real because in the end life is you know this bit of life which is the everyday thing it's the you know it's actually a gray sky it's a you know, it's, it's a bit wet outside. It's a bit cold. It's like, we don't know what's happening with the pandemic. And it's like, you know, the kids are back from university. So they're making a noise now. So this is life. It's like, oh, it's ordinary. It's like, this is it. That's a, That's the everyday of life. It is sometimes it's most everyday. It's not, there's not too much pain. There's not too much pleasure. There's, this is like the everyday life. And yet that is miraculous this moment is mir miraculous it's just wonderful to be alive and and so uh th that joint that that dual thing i really feel and i feel it in qigong i feel it in qi and i do feel it in life it's like there's nothing more exquisite than in 10 in 20 minutes poddling down to the sea and it being a bit cold and it's like oh uh, oh, it's, a, it's like, ooh, ah, uh, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yin-yang again. Yeah. Um, 
And it is. I'm glad that you mentioned the miracle of existence because that's the piece. That's the gift, my friend, isn't it? So thank yeah. you. Thank you so much, John, for being here, part of One Chi. We look forward to future um, collaborations and interviews with you. Let's see what wants to happen here. But thank go. You. You're very welcome. Go well, my Thanks friend. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Lovely to be here.